South American ships were likely responsible for the introduction of the black imported fire ant, Solenopsis richteri, to Mobile, Alabama in 1918. In the 1930s, the red imported fire ant, Solenopsis invicta, arrived in Mobile probably in soil used as ballast in South American cargo ships. Many species of ants and other species of fire ants are native to the U.S. Distinguishing between ant species is difficult. However, there are some characteristics to identify the red imported fire ant. Mounds are usually built in open sunny areas, sometimes supported by a wall, post, or shrub. The mound has no external openings. The ants enter and leave through underground tunnels. Unlike other ants, imported fire ants will run up against grass blades and sticks to defend their mound when it is disturbed. The size and development of the mound is determined by soil type and colony size. Newly developed colonies will generally have mounds a few inches in diameter. Older colonies may have mounds in excess of two feet in diameter and height. The mound is a series of interlocking tunnels and chambers which may reach more than five feet below the surface. Tunnels just under the surface radiate several feet out from the mound and have regular exit holes through which the ants go to search for food. Colonies are established by newly mated queens following a mating flight. If the queen lands on suitable area, she will remove her wings and excavate a small chamber in the soil. The queen begins laying eggs within 24 hours. She rears the first brood of workers herself. Later, eggs are cared for entirely by the workers. The fire ant colony contains workers of many different sizes. The largest workers are called majors, the medium-sized workers medias, and the smallest workers minors. The age of the worker determines what tasks it will perform, not its size. All tasks of maintaining the colony are carried out by the sterile female workers except egg production, which is now the queen's only function. The eggs hatch in seven to ten days into grub-like larvae. The larvae are totally dependent on the workers for their care. In six to twelve days, the larvae molt four times. In the fourth molt, the larvae enter the pupal stage. The adult workers emerge in nine to sixteen days and first act as nurses feeding, cleaning, and grooming the eggs, larvae, pupae, and queen. As they grow older, they become reserves that continue to care for the brood, but also help to build and defend the mound and to retrieve food. The oldest ants in the colony are foragers. They are responsible for locating food to feed the colony. If a food source is found, the foragers lay a chemical trail back to the mound where they recruit the reserves to help transport it back to the colony. The use of a recruitment system allows fire ants to quickly and efficiently provide food for the colony before its competitors can reach it. The technique of broadcasting bait for fire ant control takes advantage of this foraging and recruitment system. A mature colony will also contain winged males and females or reproductives. These accumulate in the colony until weather conditions are favorable for mating flights. A mature colony may contain 100,000 to 500,000 workers and several hundred reproductives. The adult ant can only swallow liquids, therefore all solid foods must be carried back to the colony and given to the largest larvae, the only stage in the fire ant life cycle that can digest solid food. The larvae secretes enzymes to digest the solid food particles and the resulting liquid is used to feed the workers and the queen. This exchange of liquid food is called trophallaxis. Through trophallaxis, a small part of a food source can be passed to a large number of ants. The queen controls the colony by the secretion of chemicals that are passed from worker to worker when they encounter each other through trophallaxis, and also by manipulating the production of replacement workers and reproductives. The nurses shield the queen from any danger by first consuming foods before it is fed to her, and by quickly carrying her away if the mound is disturbed. The colony can survive as long as the queen and a few workers survive. Because of this high degree of protection, a fire ant colony is very difficult to eliminate. Single queen fire ant colonies are very territorial toward other fire ants 
competing with or eliminating other nearby colonies. Newly mated queens landing in a fire ant infested area are attacked and killed by the workers. It seems the best control of fire ants may be other fire ants. In the early 1970s, the number of fire ant mounds per acre began to increase, and multiple queen colonies were discovered. Colony life differs in multiple queen colonies. The workers are less aggressive toward workers from other mounds. Mounds are closer together, making areas more heavily infested. And newly mated queens are often accepted into the mound instead of being killed. Multiple queen colonies can contain a few queens or up to several hundred, making control very difficult. As long as one queen survives, the colony can continue. The fire ants' aggressive behavior in defending their mound and the ability of each worker to sting repeatedly makes them a formidable foe to man or animal. When the fire ant stings, it injects a venom that causes a burning sensation. Pustules form and, if scratched, can become infected. People sensitive to the venom may exhibit symptoms such as headaches, dizziness, swelling of the affected area, and shortness of breath. They should seek medical attention. The ants can also affect pets, livestock, and wildlife by blinding or killing young animals and birds that are unable to escape. One of the few factors that can slow the rapid spread of the fire ant is native ants. If a population of native ants is present, the newly mated fire ant queen is likely to be attacked and killed by the native ant workers before she has a chance to burrow into the ground. The fire ant does have a few redeemable fire ant qualities. Fire ants are beneficial in some crops since they prey heavily on pests such as the corn earworm, boll weevil, and the sugarcane borer. They can also reduce populations of ticks, cockroaches, and filth breeding flies such as horse flies and house flies. Due to their high rate of reproduction, the large area of infestation, and difficulty in locating all mounds, eradication of the imported fire ant is impossible with present day controls. The use of integrated pest management strategies that reduce problems associated with fire ants without eliminating them entirely will probably be the most environmentally safe and effective option.